Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest shit to happen in running this week. This week's stories include Hayden Hawks on Strava, Craig Thornley's Nipplegate, and the kickoff to Ultra Madness 2017. Leading off this week's stories is our favorite stimulant of choice, caffeine. The substance is currently on the World Anti-Doping Agency, or WADA, watch list through the rest of 2017. It was previously banned up until 2003 when it was removed to eliminate the chance that athletes who normally consume coffee or cola might test positive. According to WADA, a substance must satisfy at least two standards to be considered for banishment. Number one, that it has the potential to enhance performance. Number two, that it poses a health risk to athletes. And number three, it violates the spirit of sport. Don't spit out that coffee yet, as even if it is added to the prohibited list, it may only be for excessive levels somewhere in the range of 12 micrograms per milliliter. That'd be like slamming four lattes in a couple hours. However, we are curious what kind of levels you'd hit after washing down a handful of caffeine pills with some Red Bull. More this week in clean sport. Are you suspicious about your fellow competitors? Concerned about those damn dopes showing up on the trail and ultra scene? Well, WADA just launched a new website and accompanying phone app for anonymous whistleblowing. The new site, called Speak Up, allows users to report alleged anti-doping rule violations in a confidential manner. Snitch away, my friends. Can you believe it, folks? More cheaters continue to move to the trail and ultra scene after being banished from their former sports. This time, it's Canadian Julie Miller who was found cheating at Ironman Canada in 2015. She apparently skipped the first loop of the marathon course, and there is video to prove it. Miller denies this and claims she never cheated but now always posts her full GPS tracks or runs entire races with a friend to prove she's doing the whole thing. She's serving a two-year ban from Iron Man currently and has sought out other events to satisfy her desire to compete. Miller won the Fat Dog 40 Mile last summer as well as competed in the 2016 Golden Ultra. It is unclear how race directors across sport lines without an overarching governing body will respond to the rising number of cheats and dopes. But already the Broken Goat 50 Ultra has stated they will uphold the Iron Man ban and not allow her to compete in 2017. Race director and Canadian athlete Gary Robbins went to Twitter to tell how he felt. She has been proven guilty beyond a shadow of doubt, yet she has never once owned up to it and yet she wants to move forward. When asked by someone if she will be allowed to run one of Gary's events, he responded, absolutely not. Hayden Hawks has been on a Strava tear these past few weeks, clocking more than one 150 plus mile week in the last five, with some solid workouts and race performances. This is his most intensive training cycle since he really started posting to Strava consistently this past July. Let's break down one of these monster weeks. Take February 27th through March 4th, which was a 153.8 mile week with 13,000 feet of climb and almost 19 hours of running, capped off with a Comfortable long run win at the Red Mountain 55K in a course record time of four hours, 15 minutes. So Monday, two runs for a total of 21 miles. Tuesday was a workout consisting of four sets of two mile repeats. The first mile downhill at 440 pace and back uphill at 630 pace. Between warm up and cool down, that's 15 miles. Follow that up with a 16 mile evening run in Zion. Wednesday is another 20 mile day broken up between two runs. Thursday morning is five one mile repeats on the track at 4.55 pace, followed by a 12 mile evening run. Friday is a 25 mile day broken up into two runs averaging seven minute pace. Saturday was his race. Watch out Chuck and Nut, Hawks is coming for you. Oh and Hawks, which golden ticket race are you running this year? Runners competing in the Foule de Tourives 14K in France experienced a bit of a breeze while crossing a bridge mid race. The wind gusts were reported at over 50 miles per hour, making for a pretty brutal experience. We have a special correspondence this week from A Jizzle Wizzle, AKA The Jizz. 
Hello there, this is The Jizz, the Outhouse's newest correspondent, coming to you from the Beast Coast out here in Virginia. Uh, reporting back on my observations of Way Too Cool this past weekend, I couldn't possibly avoid the topic of Lord Balls and his nipples. Boy, that squirrel's nut butter, his brother's company, did not do as good a job as you would have expected, and the poor form shown by 25-year veteran R.D. Craig Thornley at Way Too Cool was a sight to behold. One can only hope that in a few short weeks at Lake Sonoma, he can correct that mistake and his nipples can once again be intact and we all can be spared that grisly uh, spectacle of those pouring bloody nipples when we move out to Lake Sonoma in April. From Virginia, this is The Jizz. Thanks for that, and we here have to agree. Lord Balls, please apply that SMB on all body parts. Western States has released rainfall totals for the Forest Hill area, noting that 69 inches has fallen since October 1st, which is 50% above normal for the area. This is, however, normally the rainiest time of year, and things should hopefully be drying out heading into the June Western States 100. If not, you might want to pack your floaties. Right, Jim? Nike unveiled to the world its new shoe designed to help break the two-hour marathon barrier. It wasn't long before a certain other shoe company fired shots on Twitter pointing out that the shoe strikes a certain resemblance to its very own prototypes from 2011. Some are already bashing the shoe, saying it gives an unfair advantage. The Speed Project version 3.0 is a go-as-you-please style relay that has teams cover the 340 miles on foot between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Unlike, say, a Ragnar, this relay has no rules on specific legs or exchange points, as long as the whole route is covered by the team. Women's specific apparel brand, Oisel, launched a team dubbed Bird Strike, and their journey was well documented on social media. These badass women dealt with all sorts of challenges en route. Captain Megan Murray shared that team member Collier, aka the Bat Falcon, got bit by a dog on the highway and then saw it get hit by a car, bundled it up in a lightning layer, got it back to its owner so it could get to a vet, put the layer back on, and kept running her mileage. Damn, that's legit. These ladies went on to place first for women in 44 hours, 27 minutes. We are in the home stretch for this year's Barkley Prep. The race is coming up fast, and this of course means the birth of a new anonymous Twitter account. This time, the Yellow Gate. A gate in yellow who lives in Frozen Head State Park describes its prominence in the sport. Many have tried, but only a few have touched me five times in a fool's weekend. He joins at Barkley Course as the newest Barkley themed Twitter handle that I assume are gearing up for the big weekend. At Barkley Course tweeted out, Beginning to get ready for the runners, adding extra sawbriars, bees, and maybe a couple cougars this year. What's next? Laz's cigarette? We have a special guest this week. Joining us is Jam Jam's camera, who you can now also find on Twitter at the handle at doing all the work. Jam Cam. How goes it? Well, I guess you're the silent type in person. We'll have to head back on Twitter to hear more. It's March, and the annual Ultra Runner Madness kicked off this week. At Blow Up Arch revealed this year's bracket, so let the shit talking begin. I'm paired with Gary Robbins in round one. No matter who wins, we'll face off again in the hills of Tennessee early next month. Let's break down a few brackets in the first round for you. First off, Amelia Boone vs. Pop-Tarts. This is a classic and will be a battle for the ages. I don't think Pop-Tarts has a chance. Tim Tollefson vs. Jen Shelton. Two aspiring schemo athletes, but I think Jen's got a couple years on Timoteo. Walmsley vs. Walmsley shirt. Does the shirt make the man, or the man make the shirt? WS Sweatpants vs. See You in Squaw. Almost as good as the Tweetmire vs. Trayson matchup in 1995. Stay tuned for round two next week. On a closing note, if anyone can decipher this handwriting, we might be able to get to the bottom of Blow Up Arch's true identity. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. If you have crazy stories to share, or have thoughts on Ultra Runner Madness 2017, tweet us at Mountain Outpost. Have a Just lifeless, dude. What's going on?